Right, today's Bible reading is a massive 39 verses. So we're in for a treat. Um, and it uh, the scribe, describes the events that took place in Cyprus. Um, and so we're going to combine the Bible reading with uh, my talk, because it is massive. Uh, so I should be moving around the room. I know you love this bit with the microphone. So uh, be be aware that if the mic come, microphone comes around, I'll be looking for some responses. Okay, even the people at the back, you're not going to get away with it. So uh, we're now going to have uh, Isabel and Bethan. Would like to come up, and you're going to uh, start the reading for us. Today's Bible reading is from the Book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 13 to 52. The story begins with Paul and his friends sailing to Perga on the Sabbath. They entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul monished with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. Brilliant, girls. Thank you. If you'd like to just take a seat for a moment, that's brilliant. So, we've been introduced to our reading today. And that's quite powerful stuff, isn't it? So, what might Paul be able... What might Paul be uh, saying to them? We've heard that there's going to be good news. Any ideas what good news might be? What kind of good news might someone tell someone else? Any ideas? Now, come on. Come on. This is supposed to be interactive. <laughs> it's not just all about me. Excellent. Right, we've got some good news at the back. Was that hand up? I feel like Anna Carice here. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, if their wife's pregnant, or is they expecting a baby? That's good news. Brilliant. I love that one. We're all going to get a pay rise. (laughs) Love that one. It's not going to happen for me. Anyone else? Oh, come on, come on. Excellent. Um, I was ill, but now I'm feeling much better. Brilliant. Right, now it's all been adults so far. (laughs) Guys at the front here. Oh, excellent. I've received a gift. Received a gift. I like that one. Received a gift. Excellent. Anyone else? I'm sure I saw another hand up. Yep. Oh, hang on. Everyone needs to listen. You got a new pet? New pet. Excellent. Anyone else? Yes. If you got married? If you got married? Yep, definitely. People would want to know about that. It's good news. I've got chocolate in my bag. That's good news, isn't it? Excellent. I haven't actually, but that was the one thing I thought oh. of. I was going to see uh, Liz afterwards, but never mind. Anyone <laughs> round here? Yes. If it was your birthday, like that one. Excellent. So we often have lots and lots of good news. And it gives us encouragement. And this is what this Bible reading is all about. It's all about encouragement. And the reading is about Paul giving encouragement to the Israelites and the Gentiles. Acts 13, uh, verse 15 says, The synagogue rulers sent word to them, saying, Brothers... If you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. People need encouragement all the time, don't they? I'm a teacher. That's my nine till five-ish job uh, of a week. And encouragement is really, really important in the world of teaching. Who here loves a bit of encouragement from your teacher? Excellent. Excellent. Right. Guinea pigs. I mean, volunteers. What kind of encouragement do you get from your teachers then? Now, I'm hoping that some people have been primed about this. Hi, Bethan. Uh, that they tell you not to worry if you make a mistake. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, not to worry if you make a mistake. That's really good. Hello. Have a go. Have a go. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? Have a go. Don't worry, I'm going to come over to you in a minute, ladies. Hurry up, it's a mental math test. <laughs> an encouragement. Yeah, because mental maths is cool. Everyone loves a bit of mental maths. They help you in maths or English. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. They give you good advice. Excellent. Do you know what? I'm loving this. The, the love for jogger for teachers is brilliant here. Brilliant. 
Have a try at all you do. Yeah, have a try. Have a try. Now, I have to say... Oh, yes, daughter. Um, my form tutor, um, it was open <laughs> evening, and she said she would give us sweets and merits for it. So I decided to go in for it. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Eleanor. If your teacher says well done. Thank you, yes, and if your teacher says well done. So there's lots of different ways that you can get encouraged, particularly at uh, school, particularly at work as well. Uh, you get encouraged at work. Uh, but sometimes we forget to encourage each other, don't we? Sometimes it's easy to forget. And Paul, in his letter, he was saying to people, we need to remember to encourage people. It's really important to say words of encouragement. And there's a study that's been done in education. And it says that if you encourage people, you need to encourage people four times more than uh, giving people criticism. Because that one bit of criticism is going to be more important for that person than three, two, lots of praise. So that's really important, isn't it? That shows you that we need to really, really focus on that encouragement. And at my school, we talk about a praise sandwich. Give them praise. Maybe give them a little bit of uh, constructive criticism and then give them some more praise. Nice little package of a sandwich. A praise sandwich. And if you think about church, we do lots of praise in church. We've had some brilliant worship songs already. And look at all of the gifts of encouragement we're going to give the Women's Institute. Okay, it's going to be massive, isn't it? For them, when they get that, it's going to be a massive, massive amount of encouragement. So the reading today, first of all, is about making sure that we give encouragement. We talk about encouragement all the time. Last night was a cabaret night here at Christchurch. And that was amazing. Absolutely amazing. It was full of joy, it was full of enthusiasm, and the encouragement that we gave everyone was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And it was buzzing, wasn't it, Pete? It was buzzing, it really was buzzing, because we were all loving the encouragement that everyone was giving each other. So encouragement, guys, really, really important. But Paul goes on, and he says that encouragement reflects good news. And he's really specific there as well. We talked about what type of good news we might give each other now. But Paul's talking about the good news that Jesus died for us. So Acts uh, 16. Stand up. Uh, Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. After removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the saviour Jesus as he promised. So he's reminding, he's encouraging those Gentiles and those Israelites of the good news, the good message. Paul is reminding the people of that good news. Just like we need to remind everyone when we do something well. We need to keep on encouraging. And he goes on, Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus... The forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything you could uh, not be justified from by the law of Moses. And Paul here is reminding people what Jesus has done. He's reinforcing that good news. And today we've been asked to bring those gifts of harvest, as you can see here. And they're going to be acting as real good encouraging gifts for those less fortunate than ourselves. And at school, maybe, or in church, we're going to be collecting the shoeboxes to, again, give an encouragement to people that aren't as uh, fortunate as ourselves. And it's the power of that encouragement that really helps us get closer to God. And Paul believes that ultimately, if you encourage and you actually follow that encouragement through, not just by saying it, but by actually being part of that encouragement and acting on it then you will lead people, not just yourself, but lead people to God. He goes on that Paul and Barabbas were leaving the synagogue. The people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation were dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts 
So Judaism followed Paul and Barabbas, who talked with them, and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honoured the word of the Lord, and who were appointed for eternal life believed. So they were encouraged to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to really try and become part of Christianity. And so the key message for today is really that, first of all, we need to encourage others. We need to remember how important it is to say, well done. To just look at you and to say, yeah, well done, you did really well there. Well done on your badges. Okay? I was never a scout, but I love the idea of badges. I think they're brilliant. I run D of E at school, and uh, it's brilliant when you see the, uh, the kids uh, being encouraged to uh, finish their expedition. I love encouraging them, particularly when I'm in my car and it's raining. I just love encouraging them. I wind down the window. Oh, that's showing me age, isn't it? Uh, pushing the button to bring the uh, window down. And then come, come on, kids. It's only another 20 minutes. Is it always 20 minutes, Ellen, uh, Bethan? Yeah, I always say 20 minutes, wherever we're going. Sometimes it's an hour. <laughs> Never mind. But it gives them encouragement. And uh, they often say at the end of the uh, expedition, thanks, sir, that was real encouragement. They even sometimes say it with a smile on their face. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, so it's that encouragement, if, the fact that you need to just remember that uh, give each other some encouragement. And then, that encouragement is actions. So instead of just saying, oh, well done, you need to make sure that we do something about it, like this amazing collection here of food. That's a brilliant encouragement. The encouragement that Liz has had today with the uh, accreditation and the church as a whole has had that encouragement. It's brilliant news. And we just need to be all encouraged by that. And then finally, if we do that, it's going to hopefully bring more people to faith. And that was the idea behind Paul and uh, his uh, reading today. So, key message is that we need to encourage others. We need to say, well done. We need to make sure that uh, we're uh, doing something by our actions, actually physically encouraging people. Then hopefully that will lead people to Christ. Now, we're going to finish off the reading with Isabel, I believe. So, up you come, Isabel. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thank, thanks be to God. Fabulous. Didn't she do well? I think they both need a bit of a clap. <laughs> so, when you've got encouragement, you're filled with joy. And that's the game that we're, uh, we're hoping to uh, be part of. Okay? So when we leave this church today, be encouraged, be filled with joy, be filled with the Holy Spirit, go out there and do something amazing. Okay, over to you, Pete.